Today we are going to discuss multiplication of vectors. That is, when two vectors are multiplied, what will be the output there? Here we'll find that the two vectors, when they are multiplied, they can give either a scalar quantity or they can give a vector quantity. So they are called as the scalar product of vectors and vector product of vectors. So we'll see how we get a scalar product, how we get a vector product of vectors. We'll also discuss what is the geometrical meaning of these, like a scalar product and vector product. And then we'll see the applications of a scalar product and vector product in different cases, where we can apply these the scalar product of vectors and uh, vector product there. So all these we'll be discussing in today's discussion. In the multiplication of vectors, we have two types of multiplication. One is the scalar product or dot product. Other is vector product or cross product. If the two vectors are multiplied and we finally get a scalar quantity, in that case, we say that it is the scalar product or dot product. Similarly, if the product of multiplication of two vectors is a vector quantity, then we call that product as vector product or cross product. We'll see uh, how we get a scalar product or vector product there. Just for the terms which we have used, dot and cross, when we take uh, two vectors and if we have suppose the vector A and another is your vector B and we want to multiply them. As we know that we can get either a scalar quantity or we can get a vector quantity. So, there must be some difference in the representation of their product. So, we have the dot and cross symbol being used for multiplication. When you are taking just a scalar uh, quantity or you are taking just numbers there and if you are multiplying, suppose you have a scalar A and uh, if you take dot with B, that means you are simply multiplying A with B. Or if you have A and B and you are multiplying, you are putting a cross there. As long as this is a scalar quantity, it hardly makes any difference whether you are using dot or cross. Because in a scalars, uh, it is only one uh, type of product. Two scalars, when they are multiplied, it will always give you a scalar quantity. But for vectors, we are getting either a scalar quantity as a product or we can get a vector quantity. So just to distinguish, it is used uh, in a specific manner there. Whenever we use dot, it simply means that we are going to get a scalar quantity. And when we use cross, that means our final product will be a vector quantity. So here, dot and cross have been used for a specific type of product. And that is why whenever it is your dot product, then it is a scalar quantity or we call it as either a scalar product or dot product. Similarly, A cross B will give you a vector quantity. So we call it as vector product and or you are using a cross here. So it is also called as a cross product. So in both way, we can represent it how we are taking the product. Let's take a scalar product or dot product. Suppose we have two vectors, A and B, and we are taking their dot product. So the scalar product of that will be given by magnitude of the individual vectors and cosine of the angle between them. So a scalar product of two vectors is given by product of magnitude of the individual vectors and cosine of the angle between the two. So if you have two vectors here, A and B, which is inclined at an angle theta there, so their dot product will be simply given as your AB cos theta. So this is how we can get a scalar product. And one example of this scalar product is your work done. Like if you take work done, this is a scalar product of force and displacement. You could recall 
this expression for work done, you must have done that f is equals w equals to f s cos theta. There probably you might not have seen how this cos theta is coming there. We just take that it is w equals to f s cos theta. So w is your f s cos theta. And uh, here f is the force and s is the displacement and uh, theta is the angle between force and displacement. So this expression we use for work done. And this you can see that we can easily get it from the dot product as it is your AB cos theta. So if it is W as F dot S, so we get it as FS cos theta. Let's now take a scalar product or dot product in Cartesian system. Suppose in Cartesian system, we represent vector A as A1i plus A2j plus A3k, B as B1i plus B2j plus B3k. Here, A1, A2, A3, these are the x, y and z component of the vector A. Similarly, B1, B2, B3, these will be the x, y and z component of vector B. Now, if we have to take the dot product in the Cartesian system, if only vector A and vector B is given, the angle between the two is given there, you can easily apply the formula for dot product as your AB cos theta. But there you should know what is the magnitude of A, what is the magnitude of B and what is the angle between them so that you can find cos theta there. Here if it is represented in Cartesian system, then uh, we just express that one by taking their coordinates there and uh, components like the unit vector i, j, k and we try to express it using this. So let's see how we get the scalar product in this Cartesian system. So for that, if you have a dot b, this can be written as your a1i, a2j, a3k. We are simply putting a vector a here and then it is the dot product b1i, b2j, b3k. And now we will multiply term one. Like if I take a1i and we will multiply with all the terms there. So what we will get? It will be your a1, b1, i dot i. Then it is your a1, b2, i dot j, a1, b3, i dot k, plus a2, b1, j dot i, a2, b2, j dot j, a2, b3, j dot k. And for a3, if I am taking a3, b1, k dot i, If you consider i dot i, this will be how much? It is the dot product of i comp, uh, unit vector i. So here it is the magnitude of i, magnitude of i and cos of the angle between the two. So angle between two i caps will be 0. Being unit vector, magnitude of this will be 1. So it is 1 into 1 into 1. So it is 1. Same will be the case if I take j dot j because that will also be magnitude of j, magnitude of j, cos 0. This is also 1. It means i dot i, j dot j and k dot k all will be equal to 1. If you consider i dot j, then it will be magnitude of i, magnitude of j and cos of the angle between the two. So the angle between the two is 90. So this is your 1 into 1 into 0 and that is 0. So you take any unit vector which are different, i j, j k or k i, all will give you the dot product 0 because the angle between them will be 90. So if we take i dot j, j dot k, 
k dot i all will be giving you value as g so now if i substitute all these in this expression what will get for this term it will be 1 here it will be 0 it will be 0 0 this will be 1 here it is 0 0 0 and this is 1 so what you will get here basically a dot b you will get as a1 b1 plus 0 plus 0 0 because these two three terms will be 0 and then it is your a2 b2 that is this particular term then again it is this term j dot a k dot a k dot i k dot j all will be 0 and last term will be your a3 b3 so this product a dot b this is your a1 b1 a2 b2 a3 b3 so this is the result for the dot product of two vectors in Cartesian system now you can see the advantage advantage is if it is expressed in Cartesian system you have to simply multiply their respective coordinates there or components there you have to simply multiply their respective components like x component of both will be multiplied like a1 b1 this is the first term a2 b2 second term a3 b3 third term and will take their sum so directly you can get that so this is just the derivation of course if you get any numerical there you don't have to show all these steps there you can simply use this expression of course you can write that i dot i j dot j k dot k is 1 and i dot j j dot k k dot i is 0 so we get this result and you can substitute the values of a1 a2 a3 whatever is given in that particular numerical let's now take a geometrical meaning of a scalar product here suppose you have the vector a and this is your vector b this is inclined at an angle theta we say that uh, dot product of the two this is given as your a b cos theta so here if you consider now this is your a and this is your b suppose i drop a perpendicular from this one so this is suppose your m o m what we can write for this o m this o m divided by o b this is equals to cos theta so this o m will be your o b cos theta or that can be written as your b cos theta what is this o m this is the component of the vector b in the direction of vector a so that means i can take this a dot b which is your a b cos theta for this b cos theta i can take it as o m and this is your component of vector b in the direction of vector a so you can say that the scalar product of two vectors is the product of magnitude of one vector and the component of other in its direction this is not only for a and component of b in the direction of a if you drop perpendicular from point a and this is suppose your o n now this time this will be what this will be component of a in the direction of b so this will be your component of a along vector b here also it was your this particular one was the component of b along vector a so here also for this case if you consider you have o n divided by o a equals to cos theta for this particular triangle so this o n will be your o a cos theta or that is your a cos theta so here also if you take a b a dot b 
so it is your a b cos theta and now i can write b into a cos theta so this is your b into o n so geometrical meaning of a scalar product of two vectors is it is the product of magnitude of first vector or one vector and the component of the other vector in its direction so this is the geometrical meaning of a scalar product now let's take applications of a scalar product we have taken a scalar product of two vectors there but what are the practical uses of that so here the first one is to find angle between two vector two vectors how we use that a dot b we know that it is your ab cos theta so as you have a dot b ab cos theta so cos theta what we can write it is your a dot b by ab or theta will be equals to cos inverse a dot b divided by ab so if you want to find the angle between two vector what you have to do you first take the dot product and that one you divide by the magnitude of the vectors like magnitude of vector a and magnitude of vector b this one will give you cos of that particular angle that is the angle between the two vectors so theta will be equal to cos inverse of this quantity that is a dot b divided by magnitude of a and magnitude of b so with this you can get the angle between two vectors second application is where we have to prove that two vectors are mutually perpendicular so this is the second application to prove that two vectors are mutually perpendicular so if you have two vectors say it is your a and b this we know that it is a b cos theta for perpendicular vectors what will be the value of theta pi by 2 so in that case a dot b if i take this will be your a b cos pi by 2 and that will be 0 because cos 90 is 0 so what basically you have to show that you show that their dot product is 0 if the dot product of two vectors is zero and these two vectors are non-zero vectors in that case the two vectors must be mutually perpendicular so with that we can easily show that the two vectors are mutually perpendicular third application is when you want to find component of a vector in the direction of other vector so to find component of of one vector in the direction of other vector so suppose we want to find component of one vector in the direction of other vector we have just used that one in the geometrical meaning that if it is your a dot b that means this is your a b cos theta and this we can write it as a multiplied by component of b along vector a or it can be b multiplied by component of vector a along vector b so if you just want component of vector b along vector a it will be a dot b divided by a a dot b divided by a if you want component of a along vector b then this will be your a dot b divided by b so it is b but do remember that this gives you a scalar component this will be basically a scalar component this is your scalar component if you want vector component then you will have to multiply by 
unit vector in its direction. Like if you want a long vector a, then you have to multiply it by the unit vector in that direction. So that means same you can take vector component of b vector along vector a. This will be your a dot b divided by a as it is and it will be multiplied by unit vector along a. So that means you know that this unit vector we can write it as a dot b by a and unit vector is your vector a divided by its magnitude. So we can write this one as your a dot b then it is your vector a divided by a square. That will be the vector component of B along vector A. Similarly, if you want vector component of vector A along vector B, then this will be your A dot B divided by B and multiplied by unit vector B. Because in its direction, we are going to find this. So this will be again, this can be written as your a dot b divided by b square. If I write this vector b, b cap as the vector b divided by its magnitude, it will be this quantity. So with this, you can get this vector component. If it is only a scalar component, it will be a dot b divided by b. So this is how you can find a scalar component of a vector in the direction of other or vector component of the vector in the direction of the other vector. Just to remember, you remember one thing. In the numerator, it is a dot b in both the cases. Whether it is a component of b along a or component of a along b. So numerator will have a dot b. And now, if you take a scalar component of b along a, we have divided a dot b by a, magnitude of the vector a. If it is a component of a along vector b, we have divided dot product by the magnitude of vector b. That means you have to simply remember this, that a scalar component of one vector in the direction of other will be given by dot product of the two and it will be divided by the magnitude of the vector in whose direction we are finding the component. If it is in the direction of vector A, then it will be divided by magnitude of vector A. If it is in the direction of vector B, it will be divided by the magnitude of vector B. Other applications may be, suppose you want to find work done. As we know that work is given by the scalar product of force and displacement. So we can simply take work done as the dot product of force and displacement. So we'll take their dot product and we can get the work done. If this is given like force and displacement, it is given in Cartesian system or in Cartesian coordinates, you can simply multiply their respective components there. If it is given a uh, magnitude of forces there and uh, you know the magnitude of the displacement, you know the angle between them, you can simply use the formula fs cos theta and get the work done. Similarly, if it is asked to find power, power you know that uh, this is work done by time. So this will be your f dot s divided by t. And this term, s by t, this is your velocity term. So if it is given, force and the velocity of the body is given, you can easily find power by taking their dot product. So it will be the dot product of force and velocity. So these are applications of a scalar product of vectors. Let's now take vector product or cross product. That is when the product of two vectors gives you a vector quantity. So that is your vector product or cross product. So suppose you have vector A and we are taking cross product with vector B. So this will be given as AB sin theta 
this is the magnitude of a cross b and then it is your n cap this n cap is unit normal vector that means this is a vector which will be perpendicular to the vector a and vector b that means the cross product of the two vectors a and b will be acting in a direction which will be perpendicular to the plane containing vector a and b so this is your unit vector n and uh, so magnitude you can get from this like a cross b magnitude this is your a b sin theta and the direction of a cross b this is given by either right hand is screw rule or right hand thumb rule any one you can choose now what is this right hand uh, screw rule or right hand thumb rule here suppose you have been given the vectors a and vector b okay and we want to find cross product of this magnitude we can get it by ab sin theta to find the angle of to find the direction of a cross b we assume as if we are holding a right handed screw perpendicular to the plane containing vector a and b so we hold it in a direction perpendicular to the plane containing the two vectors a and b and we rotate it from first vector to second vector so it will be rotated from first vector that is a to b but you see we can rotate uh, the screw from first to second may be in the anti clockwise direction or it may be clockwise direction the thing is you have to rotate the screw from first vector to second vector through a smaller angle so now this particular direction will give you the smaller angle between vector a and vector b so we'll rotate it in this direction that is anti clockwise direction then the direction of advancement of tip of the screw that will give the cross product of vectors so just uh, take it once again you have to rotate a right handed screw which is held in a plane containing the two vectors and is rotated from first vector to second vector through a smaller angle then the direction in which the tip of the screw moves that will give the direction of cross product so here if i'm using right handed screw there and we are rotating in the anti clockwise direction then the tip of the screw will come out the screw will come out if you are rotating in the anti clockwise direction so the direction of this one will be out of the plane this is out of the plane uh, if you consider that this is your vector a and this is your vector b and now you are rotating vector from b to a because it is given to find the direction of b cross a so we'll rotate it from first vector to second through a smaller angle so now we are rotating in this direction that is clockwise direction and if you rotate a right handed screw in clockwise direction the tip of the screw will go into the plane so this direction will be into the plane now just to distinguish or represent the directions out of the plane direction is symbolically represented by a circle with a dot inside whereas into the plane direction we show by a cross inside a circle so wherever it is a dot inside a circle represented it means this is indicating a direction out of the plane if it is a cross being represented it means it is in the direction into the plane so this is how you can get the direction of the cross product of two vector using right hand 
is screw rule. And now let's take the right hand thumb rule. If you consider right hand thumb rule, then what we do, we take right hand and we put our fingers and thumb in this direction. That means the curled fingers will be there along with the stretched thumb. We put the curled fingers in a direction from first vector to second through a smaller angle. And the thumb will indicate the direction of cross product. So here, if I have to find A cross B, so it for A is the first vector, B is second vector. So we'll put our hand like this so that it is from first vector to second vector through a smaller angle. The thumb is indicating a direction out of the plane. So this will give the direction out of the plane. If it is B cross A, and here, if I have to move our hand, or if I have to take a B cross A, so we'll put the curled fingers of right hand in such a way that it is from B to A, that means it will be in the clockwise direction there because uh, this will give you the smaller angle between the two. So we'll put our hand like this. Now the thumb is directed into the plane. So it will be directed into the plane. So this is how you can apply right hand screw rule or right hand thumb rule. Suppose we want to find cross product in Cartesian system. So if it is a vector A, which is given as your A1i plus A2j plus A3k, Vector B is B1i plus B2j plus B3k. So if you have to take A cross B, we'll simply write uh, vector A and vector B and we'll take their cross product. After that, when you expand it, it is A1i multiplied by B1i, then B2j, B3k. So we have written A1, B1, i cross i, A1, B2, i cross j, A1, B3, i cross k, like that. Now, if you consider I cross I, this will be magnitude of I, magnitude of I, and sine of the angle between them, so it is 0 degree, so this will be 0. So I cross I will give you 0. Of course, it will be 0 vector there. Okay. Similarly, J cross J, if you take, that will also be 0 k cross k if you take that is also 0. So this gives you that i cross i, j cross j, k cross k all are 0 or the 0 vector. But if I take suppose i cross j then this one will be magnitude of i, magnitude of j, this is 1. And now the angle between the two, that is your sine 90. So this will give you the magnitude. So this will be equals to 1 into 1 into 1. And that is 1. But then we'll have to find the direction also. So if I consider that this is vector, this is suppose x-axis, this is y-axis, and this is your z-axis. It means I cap is in this direction, J cap is here, and K cap is in this direction. If I have to take I cross J, that means we'll rotate the screw from first vector, that is I cap, to J cap, through a smaller angle. So we'll rotate the screw in this direction. We are rotating it in the anti-clockwise direction. So the tip of the screw will come out of the plane, that means it will be along K axis. Or it will be along Z axis or it will be K vector or K cap. So the direction of the cross product of I and J, it will be along Z axis as the magnitude is 1. So in that case, it will represent K cap. So that means I cross K, uh, sorry, I cross J, we can write it as K k cap. Similarly, if it is your j cross k, if you are rotating it j cross k, in that case it will be in which direction? It will be along uh, x axis, so it will be in i cap. So here, if you consider it is your j cross k, 
के दिस विल गिव यू आई के क्रॉस आई दिस विल गिव यू जे बट इफ यू कंसिडर जे क्रॉस आई इट विल गिव यू माइनस के बिकॉज इट विल बी जस्ट इन अपोजिट डायरेक्शन सिमिलरली के क्रॉस जे दिस इज माइनस आई then it is your i cross k this is minus j so if you substitute all these in this expression in that case what will get here this term will be zero this term will be zero this one will be zero but now if you just substitute it here first term if you are substituting here i cross k this will be zero then it is your i cross j how much it is i cross j it is k cap so this will write it as k cap i cross k this is your i then it is your k it is your minus j so this will be equals to minus j so this way if you substitute this one will be your a2 b1 minus j it is a2 b2 zero like that and if you now collect the terms of i at one place j cap at one place k cap at one place then we will get here a2 b3 this is your a2 b3 i cap and then it is your a3 b2 minus i cap so i have taken at one place then it is your a3 b1 minus a1 b3 j cap then it is your a1 b2 minus a2 b1 k cap this is the final expression for a cross b vector here uh, if you take i cross j we have got it as k cap then j cross k it was your i cap you can find the direction by using right hand thumb rule or screw rule there there is one shortcut method also to remember you just take one circle and write i j and k okay and suppose we take it uh, one direction like this whenever you are going or moving in particular cyclic order in that case it will be the next term which you are taking that means if i have to take i cross j i am going in proper direction say this is suppose positive so i cross j will be k j cross k will be i similarly if it is your k cross i this will be equals to j but if you have to take suppose j cross i so if i have to take j cross i that means i have to move in opposite direction so if i have to move in opposite direction in that case it will be negative so this will be your minus k cap similarly if it is your k cross i k cross j this will be minus i if it is your k to i cross k if you are taking in that case this is your minus j so with this you can easily get the cross product of the vector represented in terms of the unit vectors there is an alternative method to find the cross product if the vectors are given in cartesian system because that was the derivation which we have discussed just now and uh, that is a slightly lengthy process there you have to write so many terms there but if you have to take the cross product you can try this one this is by expansion of the determinant what we do if you have to take i cross j we'll take a determinant here it will be your i j k first row will be i j k then it will be the coefficients of the first vector if it is your a cross b i will write here its coefficients like a1 a2 a3 then it will be the coefficient of the second vector so it is your b1 b2 b3 
Had it been B cross A, then first will be definitely I, J, K. Second will be your B1, B2, B3. And then it will be A1, A2, A3. Now, what we do next? We start with I, J and K. So, first we'll take I. And what we do? The row and the column in which that exists. Like this one and this. This row, this column. We'll just overlook these two. Whatever will be left, that we write it as a minor. So that means if I just suppose, assume that it is not there, this is not there. So what will be left? It will be your A2, A3, B2, B3. This will be a minor there. And then it is your I cap as it is. It will be written. We take alternate plus and minus. So, first term is plus, second will be minus. And now for J, this row and this column will be omitted. Now it will be left with A1, A3, B1, B3. And then it is your J cap. Third is your K cap. So, again, this particular row and this column will be omitted. It will be your A1, A2, B1, B2. This is your K cap. Now you have to just expand the determinant. And how do you expand the determinant? We multiply diagonally, starting with this corner. And we take the difference. Okay, we start from here, we multiply diagonally, and then we take the difference. So what we'll do? A2, B3, this will be multiplied. Then it will be your A3, B2 and we'll take their difference. This way we are multiplying diagonally. This way also we are multiplying and we are taking difference. So this is your A2, B3 minus A3, B2. This is I cap. Second one will be A1, B3 minus A3, B1, J cap. Here it will be A1, B2 minus A2, B1. Just if you want to get rid of this negative sign, you can change the order. So it is A2, B3, A3, B2, I cap, A3, B1, A1, B3, J cap, and this is A1, B2, A2, B1, K cap. So this is your cross product of vector. So just by expansion of the determinant, you can directly get the result. If you just practice the determinant, you don't have to show all these uh, steps there. You can easily do uh, multiplication uh, just by taking the determinant and you can, with little practice, you can directly come to this result. Let's now discuss geometrical meaning of vector product. What does the vector product geometrically represents? Here, suppose I have taken vector A. This is suppose vector A. This is your vector B. Angle between them is theta. So what we write? A cross B. Magnitude wise, this is your AB sine theta. So here, if we consider this as a parallelogram and we drop a perpendicular from here this is suppose your OA this is B and this is your N now in this uh, figure if you consider this BM by OB this will be sin theta and BM will be equals to OB sin theta and this is your B sin theta. So if you now take this term A B sin theta, this can be written as your A into this BM. 
That means this particular term is what? This is just like the base OA and this is the height. BM is the height. So what does this will represent? This will represent area of parallelogram. This is your area of the parallelogram OACB. That means cross product of two vector magnitude wise represents the area of the parallelogram for which the two vectors are its adjacent sides. So this is the geometrical meaning of cross product of vectors. You can also consider this uh, like suppose I take this diagonal. It means I have divided this parallelogram into two parts. So this will also be equal to two times area of the triangle. That is the area of the triangle formed by these two vectors. So triangle say O, A, B. So this is also equal to twice the area of the triangle formed by the two vectors as its sides. This is the geometrical meaning of cross product of two vectors. Now let's see applications of cross product of vectors. In that, first we are taking uh, first application to find the angle between two vectors. Two vectors are there and you want to find the angle between the two vectors. Now we know that uh, A cross B vector in magnitude, this is AB sine theta. So from this we can get sine theta equals to A cross B magnitude divided by AB or theta will be equals to sine inverse A cross B divided by AB. This will be the expression. So we can find the angle between the two vectors from this expression. We have to take sine inverse of magnitude of the cross product of the vector divided by the product of magnitude of the individual vectors. Remember, uh, to find the angle between two vectors, we can also take help of the dot product. Of course, there it was theta as cos inverse A dot B divided by AB. Here also by using cross product, we can get the angle. It will be now sine inverse A cross B magnitude divided by AB. If in the problem, it is not mentioned that you have to use cross product or dot product to find angle. Because normally the question is there, find the angle between the two vectors. Vector A will be given, vector B will be given. Usually it is also there in Cartesian system. So there they will tell you to find the angle between the two vectors. If it is not mentioned, it is better if you use dot product of vectors there. Because finding dot product is very simple. Here you have to use cross product. And when you are using cross product, you have to expand the determinant. So it is slightly lengthy in respect to finding dot product. So it is better if you use a, a dot product and take theta as cos inverse a dot p divided by a p. Of course, by this also you are getting, but here the process will be slightly lengthy there. Second application is, uh, if you have to prove that two vectors are parallel, to prove that two vectors are parallel. So again, uh, as we know that uh, A cross B magnitude, this is your AB sine theta. So for parallel vectors, theta will be zero. And if theta is zero, then A cross B magnitude, if you consider, this is your AB sine zero and that is zero. So you have to basically show that the cross product of the two vector is coming out to be zero. If you get cross product of the two vector as zero, it simply means the two vectors are parallel to one another. Next application is or to find unit vector perpendicular to the given vector. This is very important, often comes in the exams. Here, what we do, 
Let's take the cross product expression A cross B. We write it as your A cross B magnitude and then it is your N cap. It is basically A B sine theta. N cap is unit normal vector. This is the vector which is perpendicular to the two vectors A and B. So here from this if you consider N cap, this is your A cross B divided by magnitude of A cross B. So this is unit vector and it is perpendicular to the given vector. So obviously if it is asked to find unit vector perpendicular to the given vector, indirectly you have to find this unit normal vector. So for that you simply take the cross product of the two vectors divide by its magnitude. Another application is to find area of the parallelogram formed by given vectors as adjacent sides. Just in the geometrical interpretation or meaning of the cross product we have discussed that A cross B magnitude if you are taking this represents area of parallelogram. So if it is asked to find area of the parallelogram you simply find the cross product of the two vector and take its magnitude. Similarly, if it is asked to find area of the triangle formed, so if it is the area to find the area of the triangle formed by given vectors as adjacent sides, so this will be area of triangle formed that will be half magnitude of cross product because it will be area of the parallelogram basically cross product of the two vectors which is twice the area of the triangle. So you find out the cross product of the two vector take its magnitude divide by two you will get the area of the triangle formed. So this is another application of cross product of vectors. If you have to find angular momentum, angular momentum will represent L vector as cross product of R and P position vector and the momentum that is the linear momentum. So if you have to find angular momentum, you simply take the cross product of position vector and the linear momentum of the body. Similarly, if you have to find torque, to find torque. Torque is given as cross product of position vector and force. So torque will be R cross F. So you simply find position vector, take the force and take their cross product that will give you torque. So these are some of the applications of cross product of vectors.